Hi guys, Morgan from Fabulous. Today we're heading down to the dyno to test our brand new next gen Ranger Airbox. Pretty much what we're looking for today is not realistically any huge power gains, but just to see how it fares against the factory airbox flow wise, what the airflow meter does to make sure we're not gonna throw any codes or have any problems there. And yeah, just to see how it goes and make sure we're backing up everything that we've done engineering wise. So we're over here at Desta Automotive, just chucking the Ranger and the Raptor on the dyno. Basically just doing some testing to see if there is any difference, mainly to make sure we don't go backwards, yeah. I suppose, as well. Yeah, probably, I'd, I'd say minimal gains for an airbox, but if anything, we're really looking for better filtration, better surface area on the filter, um, and fully sealed airbox, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah I agree. So in this dyno run, we have got uh, the fabulous fabrication airbox installed in the car. We were able to get some data from the standard computer with this. At 2800, we get a crossover point in the airflow. You see a little dip just after it. Basically, I believe that's the first turbo crossover point onto the second turbo. So on the fabulous airbox, we saw a peak of 162 grams per second at 2800 rpm as it got onto the second turbo we saw a peak at 3900 rpm of 207.87 grams per second um, these numbers were quite a little bit higher from the stock airbox um, you can see in the data here especially in the grams per second a big change so we're seeing a peak on the smaller turbo of 142 grams per second before the crossover point peak stays at the same rpm um, but it's a fair bit lower at 190 grams per second. The standard computer didn't seem to be affected by these numbers. Um, we got very similar horsepower numbers on both dyno runs. So I'll just give you guys a quick rundown of the basic parts that we've had to machine, fabricate, draw up for the next gen Ranger airbox. This here being the MAF housing. So this, this has taken a fair bit of R&D to get this to this point. We've had to fabricate, draw them in-house, 3D print them, test them, and then get them to the point of CNC milling. Um, 
These are an exact replica of the factory airflow meter housing, um, just to made into our aluminium airbox. So the factory airflow meter mounts in here. It's the same diameter. We've tested these on the dyno meticulously. Um, we've had no fault codes no difference in fuel economy um, and no issues with these mounted into the aluminium airbox that we fabricate. So the reason why we've gone to this slide in and weld in type rather than the boss, because it allows us pretty much millimeter perfect uh, tolerance to make sure that you're gonna have no dramas running our airbox. Um, and if, if you're far away and you're having fault codes and you're having to clear these, um, some of our competitors' airboxes run the weld on boss and we believe it's, it's just not controlled enough, especially for the money you're paying for these airboxes these days and the money you're paying for the car. Um, we believe this, this is the best option that we can offer mounted into our airbox. Another machine foot. Same deal, we've had to go through the, uh, the process of drawing these, 3D printing, CNC milling, testing in the factory rubbers to ensure that they mount exactly as the factory airbox does. Um, this way, when you're going to fit, this mounting foot will secure into the factory rubber and this will secure in the spot that the factory airbox mounts to the upper rail. Um, with these feet, once they're located, they do lock in slightly, so you won't have issues with the airbox rattling around or popping out, but you do have allowance for movement of the engine given that these are a rubber mounted uh, foot. Uh, these also mount into the bottom of the airbox for the drain in the lowest point of the airbox, ensuring that any water that comes in through the snorkel won't make its way to your air filter. It'll just get trapped in that low point of the airbox and given the valve's supposed to be open for everyday operation, that water will just travel straight back out again. So you're never gonna have dramas with wet filters, airflow meter codes, um, any sensors getting dirty, and no collapsed air filters because the filters we use are the foam uni filter, Australian made, Australian powder coated cages. So you're never gonna have issues with that filter breaking down and they're fully serviceable as well. Um, this back foot, another laser cut folded item pretty much just welds to the back of the airbox and then it secures with an M6 bolt to the upper rail, um, meaning you're never gonna have any dramas. It's quite easy to fit. And realistically, all you need to fit the airbox is a seven mil socket or hose clamp tool and uh, M10 socket and a ratchet and you can get that thing mounted straight up and it shouldn't take longer than half an hour to do so. That's pretty much a brief rundown of the machine parts that will end up going into our next gen Ranger airbox. We've put a lot of time and effort into these parts to make sure that they're not gonna let you down and that they are the best looking and most reliable option to go into your next gen Ranger, especially given that people are paying upwards of 70, $80,000 for these cars these days. Um, we wanted to offer the best possible airbox we could to the market to make sure that they fit with any Western filters catch can setup, and that you're not gonna run into any drama trying to fit accessories to your four drive given that mo most Ranger owners will take these for touring, camping um, and traveling. They're gonna want dual battery setups and so far that we know of, our airbox is the only one to offer that to this market. Today on the dyno we found with the factory airbox, we we're running around 143 horsepower. Um, this thing does have 34s, it, they will sap probably 20-ish percent power from a standard figure. With that factory airbox on the dyno, that was our baseline. We ran it with the snorkel and without the snorkel. We found with the snorkel we were running one horsepower more. Um, can be due to the fact that it's sucking colder air than from under the guard where all the heat soak and the exhaust heat is coming from. Once we installed our fabulous fabrications next gen airbox, we didn't have any power increase, which was what we were expecting because nothing has changed to the tune. Um, it's still running the same boost. What we were looking for is no codes and similar airflow readings through the airflow meter. We did notice 
that with our airbox, we were having more flow over the airflow meter. With this flow increase over the airflow meter, it, it does show that we have less flow restriction with the filter. Um, we found we've done the calculations on the filtered surface area versus the standard filter in the standard airbox. Um, we do have around two times more filtered surface area with our uni filter than the factory air filter. This realistically is going to give you better longevity for the, for the serviceability of the air filter. Um, you're not going to have to clean it as often. And to the fact that these Australian made uni filters are fully serviceable, we offer recharge kits for these. Um, and realistically with double the surface area, you're going to be servicing them pretty much. Your service intervals are going to be halved. So with that comes the cost benefit. They look fantastic. Like the black on black with the etch logo in the engine bay, the Mannix black durable powder coat, it looks awesome in there. Like it all ties in with the factory black trimmings. It fits perfectly in here with an ARB dual battery kit. And, and I'd say, given this is the benchmark for dual battery kits, it will fit with majority of battery kits as well. Um, it fits in already with our fabricated washer bottle kit. So anyone already running our snorkel kit, rip your factory box out, throw it in the bin and throw one of ours in and you'll be good to go. Well, what about a safari snorkel? Yeah, look, we will be developing this air box to run with a safari snorkel. So we're gonna be changing the inlet point to make sure that it mates up with a safari snorkel. So anyone who already has a safari snorkel or is looking to get one over a stainless snorkel, <laughs> but <laughs> if you are looking to get a safari snorkel, we will be developing this airbox to be adaptable to a safari snorkel. So that is also an option down the track as well. So if you're in the market for the best next gen Ranger airbox that's compatible with the majority of accessories available on the market, come down and see the guys and girls of Fabulous today or order yours online and we'll get it straight out to you. Oh, 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 oh,